Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden with The Geek Group and welcome to our recording studios. Now you've seen the videos of us working on this. Uh, we've got like 15 videos in the series on building the recording studio. We are now at the stage where we, we've, we're starting on the floor and the walls are done, the ceiling is done, and we're starting on the isolation booths because we've got, the, when, when you build a studio and you want really good isolation, you want to build a room within a room, so we're building three isolation booths. We've got isolation booth A and B here, these are the two big ones, and we have a small vocal booth which is just big enough for a guy to stand and sing. And we can use that for voiceover work and stuff like that. The first step on building our isolation booths is we use two by six framing construction. Now, we, a lot of guys talk about using stringers versus not using stringers. Stringers are short pieces of bridge between that are just like two by sixes in between that are you know spaced throughout. We didn't do that on this because this, these two by sixes are going to be completely rigidly attached to multiple layers of floor above and they're going to sit on the floor on the U-boats, so they're really not going to be vibrating back and forth. We don't really have any big worries about that. Now, we want to decouple this, the isolation booth, from the room. So you don't want, the, this whole room can't touch the rest of the room. So we're going to separate it mechanically and acoustically from the other walls and the floor and to get it off the floor one of the very first things we use are these. This is called a U-boat and I'll let Mikey get a really good shot of it there. That's it. It is a little piece of mechanical rubber and they're about half an inch thick on the bottom and the sides are about quarter down to three-eighths and it's just a little rubber puck. I mean you can bend them. They're very bendy and they're not expensive. You can get them for about two bucks a piece and we're putting these all through here and the whole room floats on these. The, the way they're designed is the notch on top fits perfectly on a piece of two by lumber. So you can put on a two by four or two by six, two by eight, whatever, and it'll just fit. And this is the actual pad that the room on. Think of them as tires for your room. And they're, that's pretty much all there is to them. They're, they're simple. To install them, you want to make sure that you don't have anything going through it this way. So you don't like, you don't like put it on there and like put a nail through. That would be bad. That would totally defeat the purpose. Um, you can ca use caulk or you know something like that to just stick them on. For us in here, we're using little staples. We've got a, a finish nailer, and we're putting them on like that. And then you put a staple through on each side. And as long as they're going in the sides, it's okay because you're, you're, the room sits on the bottom piece. So you don't want anything through the bottom, but you can use the sides. So we just put it right on there like that and just pop it right in and you're done that fast. Um, now the things you need to know when you're installing these, you want to space them evenly, as evenly as you can. It's not rocket science, so don't stress it too hard. But you want them every 16 inches on center in the middle and around the perimeter you want them a little bit closer. You want them about 12 inches on center around the perimeter because you have the whole weight of the wall above is going to be pushing down. So. That's the basics of it. You want them 16 in the middle, 12 on the center, and, or on the perimeter, and that's all on center for these. And you can decouple your room using mechanical rubber. Now, there's other, you can get, there's other products like this. They, they sell like stuff that looks like hockey pucks. They suck. Don't get them. These are cheap. They work. You can get them. Um, Sweetwater sells them. That's where we bought them. And they're made by a company called Oralex. And we're going to be using a lot of Oralex products throughout the studio. This is just the one on the bottom, so it's the first one you'll see. So, yeah, that's the basics of it. We've got these framed in. And as we get into the design of the rooms, we'll talk about acoustical shapes and why these rooms are shaped kind of funny with the big cutoff corners and stuff like that. And we'll get into some acoustical design. We'll have a lot of fun with that. But for right now, I just got to staple a whole bunch of these to the floor. So I'm going to have the guys come in and give me a hand. And we'll be back in a minute and talk about insulation. All right, we're back now, and we've got, this is after all the U-boats are installed, and we've got it positioned properly. It's up to the wall. Everything's cool. 
and now it's time for you to do your mojo here. You're going to be doing insulation? Yes, I am. Okay, so we've got R30, which is the highest R value insulation we could get. Yep. It's designed for a thick space. It's designed for, I think it says nine inch space. Nine inches. It's intended to go into your attic. Okay. Um, which was really the only choice for the R30. Okay. Yeah, well, there, there's a lot of like R13 choices, and we didn't want that. We want the, the high R. We were shooting for a 34 or something like that, but they didn't have any. So right, we could only do a higher than 30 if we decided to go with blown-in insulation. No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> All right, the big thing when you put in insulation is you want to make sure for this application, because we don't care about the thermal properties here. We care about the acoustical properties, and we're putting the insulation in here to control the, the resonance inside the right. channels. So we're just going to put it in, but it, it's designed for 9 inch, so it'll be a little bit packed, but we're not smushing it in. You don't want to like crunch it down because that defeats the purpose of it. Right. You want it to be pretty much the same consistency that your pillow is on your bed when you're done. Okay. That's a, that's a good analogy for it. Yep. All right. So you're going to do insulation. Yep. And there's a couple of things that people need to know before they do insulation. Okay. You want to wear long sleeves. doesn't matter how hot it is outside. If possible, you want to have it kind of covered up towards your neck. Okay. And you want gloves that cover the gap between your hand and your sleeve. Yeah, I've seen you do this sometimes and you put duct tape around your yep. gloves. Um, we're working on the floor today, so I'm not wearing a dust mask. But if you're working any way where you have your hands above your head, you want to wear face protection as well. Okay. And when we do the walls in here, you'll see me with a mask and glasses on. Okay. And when we do um, the ceiling for these, uh -huh. we can actually do it after we've put the bottom layer of the ceiling on. I'll do it So that we top. do it from the top down. It makes it a lot easier. Yep. Cool. All right. Well, I'm going to let you rock out on this, and okay. I'm going to get back to doing more U-boats for the, the other thing. Well, have fun. Cool. You have fun, and I'm going to rock out. Okay. All right. Sometimes the insulation will come with a paper backing. Um, this particular stuff did not. If you have the paper, the paper side faces you. On this, one side is very obviously the outside. This is very fuzzy and this has a, a bit of a sealer coat on it. Okay, I think that's it. Now I gotta do the other sides of them. Oh, those work great. What? Yeah. There's really no good way to cut insulation. Well, there is a good way to cut insulation, and that's to lay it flat on a thing and, you know, you use a smush a board and a razor blade. It's still a pain. Moose? Yeah? I'm totally done with U-boats.
Yeah? Yeah. That's cool. I'm pretty happy about that. So you can insulate everything. Okay. That's good to know. That's quite the system you got there. I've done this a couple of times. Oh, that's a cool idea. Flipping it? You cut the angle and then flip it around. Yep. And the angle matches. Yep. This piece is not quite as long as the hole that we're filling, but that's fine. Um, just fill it in as much as you can and then start the next piece right next to it. It won't matter in the slightest. Time for another roll. That's a quick way to spend $9. Well, at Home Depot and at Lowe's, anytime you get bulk items, they're always very nice and polite and help you load your car. And the folks at Home Depot don't know me very well, but they happen to have this particular insulation and Lowe's doesn't. And they insisted on helping me load up my car. And I said I was fine. They helped me anyway. The guy came out to my car, which is an Aveo hatchback for those that don't see me drive around every day. And his idea of helping me load up my car was suggesting that I go return three rolls. It all fit. I could not have possibly purchased 10 rolls, though. And when I went and got lunch, it kind of had to sit on the insulation.
So Dan stopped by from Rushmore Auto Body, one of our local sponsors, and kind of, you're kind of flipped out here. <laughs> so this is what's up. This is the floor of the room, but that's different than this. This is the isolation booth, and we're going to build, like, there's the booth there. That's booth oh. A, isolation booth B, and that's the vocal booth. Okay. So, and this one's out in the room a bit. This this will be back closer to the wall, uh -huh. but this is a whole separate room, like with a, its own ceiling and walls and and floor and all that, separate from the room that we're in. That way, the, the sound that happens in here stays in here, and the sound that happens out there stays out there. So, what the the little black things you're asking about? These are U-boats. They're uh, made by a company called Oralex, and they're little pieces of mechanical rubber that are shaped. So especially, you can see they. Yeah. They, no, it, it, well, it creates an air gap under here, but that, that doesn't really do anything. Um, the purpose of these is mechanical isolation. The, by setting the whole room on rubber, the whole thing can bounce, and it doesn't transmit all those vibrations to the floor. So, yeah. And Moose is insulating over there. Oh, I don't feel that. Yeah, I, I did all the framing and the U-boat. She she's better at the insulation than I am anyway, so that's her thing. Wow, so that's going to kind of tighten this room up a little bit, isn't it? That's, everybody's been I writing in. It's all going to be open. No, like everybody's been writing in. It's like, oh, the echo's terrible. It's like, yeah, it's going to go away in a hurry. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, because these are all going to be eight feet tall. They won't go all the way to the ceiling. The ceiling in here is 11 feet. Yeah. But these are going to go up eight feet. Wow. It's pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I... And there'll be, you can see where the walkway will be, and there'll be like a storage area over here and there'll be a storage area over there for like putting cables and stuff and amplifiers and stuff. We're going to put um, all the MIDI gear over there in that corner and that'll be the vocal booth so that'll have some equipment in it and it's, it's going to be neat. Wow. We're getting there. I, yeah, I guess I, I kind of thought this was just kind of like a sound studio kind of thing but I guess it is but hey. <laughs> You know what you're doing there. Well, now, now it makes sense, though. Cars. Now it makes sense, though, why we have the two windows. The little window is yeah. for the vocal booth. Wow. So I understand the insulation. It's not for cold. It's just yep. for sound. It's, it's, that's for sound. And that'll be in all the walls and the ceiling, too. Oh, my God. And that's, that's a minor level of the acoustical engineering going into them. You ought to see, like, the, the floor has, like, five layers. You guys have done so much of this. We're getting there. It's incredible. I, you know, it's, it's a lot of work. I, I can't help but have these concerns, you know, with these. With the tax war and yeah, all that? that? That's insane. Yeah. Some, somebody, <laughs> trust me, uh, somebody wants. Oh, yeah, we know. We've all these improvements. We, we know somebody wants us out of here. We just yeah, don't know who. Somebody, somebody wants, wants to, us to go away. Wants to make some money. Moose! Yes. You're done. I, I'm very nearly done. Here we cool. go. Last piece. I've got a little bit of gap. Give me that piece right there. That one? Yeah. There. One of the great things about this insulation is if you have a bit of a gap like this, it's not a problem just to take a scrap piece and kind of stuff it in the hole. Okay. It doesn't really care which way it's facing. It's not a huge deal. Cool. You got a little gap down here too, but I don't think it's gonna be that big a deal. I'd, I'd smush it in. Yeah, it'll be fine. Cool. It's big pink billowy room. Yay! Ta -da -ta. Now, something I didn't mention before that's what? really important. If you have small animals, and you yeah, don't the let the dog play in here when you're doing this. And cats think that it's great to chew on. <laughs> and I'm okay with that. It'll mess your cat up pretty bad. I'm okay with that. So, yeah. <laughs> the kitty wants to play. Yay! Y you don't want to see that kind of vet, though. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, you've done this. Yeah. And now the next layer is floor. We, we start with the three-quarter inch OSB. But that's a different video. We'll be back tomorrow. You guys have fun. Thank you, Moose. I'm You're not welcome. shaking your hand. <laughs> and we will see you guys later. Oh, just a little thing. If you get the itchies from fiberglass, a thing that will help a lot with that, use cold water. If you wash your, if you like get it on your hands and on your arms and you're all itchy and you hop into like a really hot shower, 
All your pores open up and it sucks the fiberglass right down into your pores and it's gonna suck for a week. So use really, really cold water. Lava soap works really good. Um, if you've got it really bad, um, places like your hands and that, where you, you know, if you're a manly man, you're not covered in hair, um, rubber cement, like take a little ball, take, put a goop of rubber cement in your palm and rub it around and you'll, you'll end up with a ball of it and rub that all over your hands and it'll pull them out. It works really well. I've used that a thousand times. But that's why Moose did this and I didn't because I hate working with fiberglass and well, I did I, my I part. don't mind. And okay. it's really important that the next thing I go do is take a shower anyway. Yeah. So there there's you go. fiberglass dust all over the place. Okay. Well, you want to do the other two? Not right now. Okay, you want to do them later? Yeah. Okay. Well, you guys have fun. I'm Chris Bowden with the Gate Group. We'll see you next time. Bye.